Hey there. I'm here to teach you some pro DFL tips. There's a few features and mechanics and even some really basic stuff that I don't think are quite graspable to new players as some might think. And because of missing some really useful information, I feel that sometimes potential long-time players may become frustrated early on or just stop playing the game altogether. And I'm here to try to prevent that as much as I can in a really simple and short video. So with that aside, let's begin. When you make a new character, and when you beat the first dungeon with the jump, attack, and skill buttons that you're provided with, you'll be sent to town. As soon as you're in town, you'll notice it's just like a lot of other MMOs, and you can walk, accept quests, and buy things all yada yada yada, whatever. But before you dive in, you gotta set everything to your liking. Much like any game I play, I always check the settings. You can press escape to access any menu easily, so I recommend going straight to settings and hotkeys. There are many keys to set, but in my opinion the most important are Jump, Attack, Skill 1, and Skill 2 for dungeons. These are your four basic attack buttons you'll need at a minimum. Of course, if you don't plan the fight using only macros, then you'll probably want to set all your hotkey buttons to your liking. These are the ones I use, but you can do what you like. You'll also want to set Guild, Friends, Quests, Skills, Inventory, and Peer Search. These buttons are important for getting dungeons done and finding people to get them done with. If you're not fond of typing, or can't at all for some reason, don't forget the chat macros. It's totally optional, but if you want a quick and easy way to talk to people, then you can set them. It's often overlooked, but I kind of love MMOs that do this. Skills used to be a really big pain in the butt in DFO, but now it's really, really simple. As long as you remember what hotkey you set skills to, just press it, and there you go, you got your entire skill tree for all of your skills for all of your levels. All you have to do is click the plus on the skill you like, and then the minus if you wish to spend your SP elsewhere. There's little videos and information that tells you everything you need to know about that skill. There's no real guide to properly using skill points, just note that when your advancement comes at level 15 or your subclass, your SP or skill points will reset and you'll be given skills relevant to whatever subclass you had picked. If you really want to do it right, there's tons of guides online. All you gotta do is search it up. Like example, if you want to be a Blade Master, just search up Blaze Master Guide or Blaze Master Skill Build and there you go, easy peasy. If you ever want to drag a skill from your skill tree to your hotkeys, all you gotta do is open up your skill list and drag it. Easy as that. This next part is really important in my opinion. Command macros. If you open up your skills and click this button, you are greeted with an interface to change macros for any of your active or buff skills. If your class has a lot of skills or buffs, odds are you're going to run out of hotkeys at some point. Command macros make it so that you can create an input that activates the skill instead, saving you a hotkey. All you need to do is click the box, enter your desired command like, let's say, down, forward, and then skill 1, which is a Hadouken motion. The buttons you can use are jump, attack, skill 1, and skill 2. Using command macros make things way easier to manage. Let me give you an example. I have a soul bender, but soul benders have a lot of buffs and summon skills. Since I prefer to keep hotkeys reserved for attacks to make combos easier, I set all the soul benders summons and buffs to a command macro. So, if I want to use my buffs, I press up up attack, down down attack. And all four of my summons are down down skill 1, down up skill 1, down 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 skill 1, and up 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 skill 1. Easy to do and easy to remember. Since ultimate attacks, or awakenings, are so scarcely used, I set them to the skill 2 button. So for a big move, I do forward skill 2, and for my next one, I do up skill 2. Kind of like Smash Brothers. This saves me a lot of room in my hotkeys and for moves that are for, for you know moves that are for combos. Plus, a fun fact: doing skills via command macro specifically reduce the MP cost and cooldown of said move. Another thing to note: right-clicking a skill seals the command macro, making it impossible to use it, rendering the skill hotkey exclusive. So. If you want to cut out the possibility of accidentally doing a macro for a skill you didn't want, right click it and seal the macro. I do this for all my hotkeyed skills, naturally. The gray lock on the top left means it's sealed. As you play DFO, eventually, maybe around level 30, you realize that you're either lonely or dungeons are really starting to kick your butt. 
You can press the peer search button to open up a menu full of parties that exist. You can request to enter for a dungeon that you want, or make one for yourself and name it, and wait for people. For example, if you want to do, let's say, fanatics, open up your peer search and see if any of them are labeled for fanatics, and, jo and just join in and say hi and there you go. If they're grayed out, then you just wait for them to come to town and then request. Right now, it's really early in the morning, so there's this isn't really a good example for footage, but trust me, if you go to the appropriate channel for your dungeon area, it should be packed. To make a party, simply click make, label it, and then put all the details that you want people to see, and there you go. It's a very simple process that can get you a long way. There's a difference between doing a dungeon and destroying one. Faster runs means faster fatigue burn. And if you're like me, usually that's what you want. Whether it is to get things done in your day to day or to get more characters out of the way before the FP resets. Another tip that I didn't even learn until late DFO Global myself, if you click the little left arrow that it's near the hotkeys, it opens up another menu with all the skills that aren't on your hotkeys and all the passives that you have. Basically all the skills that you have in general that aren't on your skill tree. This menu gives you the option of seeing skills that are in cooldown, even if they aren't in your hotkeys. Because usually, in hotkeys, that's the only way you can see what the cooldowns of your skill are and whether or not it's ready to be used again. But if you click the clock on the top right and label which skills you want to see the cooldowns of, whenever you do that skill, a little tiny icon with, and sometimes if you go over it and it'll show you how long it is, will show up to show you how long you have for that skill's cooldown without it actually having to be on your hotkeys. This is super useful for anything you do. So label as many as you want, apparently up to 10, and there you go. Another basic thing is that each room that you go into in a dungeon takes up 1 FP, and the special dungeons for each area use 8 FP and require 8 FP to even enter. So aside that, uh, FP resets at 5 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, um, that's really all you need to know in my opinion, the stuff that not a lot of people, sometimes even myself, understood right away about DFO, and it's stuff that can help you and maybe stop you from quitting the game from getting frustrated. Uh, I hope this video helped you or taught you a new things or showed you new perspective, whatever. Uh, show this video to newcomers, and uh, that's it. I only made this video to help out some few friends of mine, so yeah. Hope you enjoyed, and uh, see you later. Unleashing Barrier! You win!